Being overwhelmed sucks. It can feel suffocating when you have to deal with your classes, internships, side projects, lead code, clubs, and everything else you have going on in your very busy life. It can feel like you can't do the best you can, but I'm here to assure you that that's very possible. In this video, I'm going to take you through the big aspects of being a CS major, classes, side projects, and getting an internship, and hopefully by the time you're done watching this video, you're going to feel a lot more confident in your ability to succeed as a CS major. Let's get into it. Yes, I know that as a CS major, your GPA doesn't need to be great, but it does need to be acceptable. And to make sure that it is acceptable and not on life support, you're gonna have to take care of a few things. First, you're clearly gonna have to put in the time and effort to understand the material. This involves paying attention in class and asking questions when you don't understand something. Of course, I understand that asking questions might be a little bit of a problem if it's in class in front of a bunch of people, but there's other ways to do that. You can probably ask it on your class forums, whatever they use, or just ask a teaching assistant or a professor after class hours, that's fine. Just make sure that if you have any doubts, they get clarified. And also, if you have to pay attention in class, that means you actually have to show up to class. So at the very least, do show up. What I don't understand is when people do poorly on assignments or quizzes or exams because they weren't showing up to class, and then they continue not to show up to class, expecting things to change. Show up to class. All you have to do is just get out of bed and walk to class. It's fine if you slack off a little because you can't have 100% of per attention the entire time, but you really do need to be going to class. Now, if you watch some of my vlogs, then you'll realize I'm being a little bit hypocritical here because I do skip my classes from time to time, but that's because I think that I'll be fine if I skip my classes because I'm not gonna be learning anything in any of them anyways. That's a very bad mentality to have, so do as I say and not as I do. Speaking of assignments, quizzes, and exams, you should be doing your best to stay on top of everything that's been assigned to you and everything that's coming your way. Whether this be on a physical to-do list, Notion, or Obsidian, I don't really care. Just make sure you're writing stuff down so you know when things are coming up. And of course, as soon as you get an assignment, do a little bit of work on it and start work on it early because you don't want to be having to pull all-nighters because you should never really have to pull an all-nighter. But I understand that sometimes it might happen. But if you're one of my friends watching this, I know you guys don't need to pull all nighters. Keeping your assignments and priorities under control and managed will require you to have good time management skills. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but I do have another video where I go very much into detail about how to manage your time. So if you're interested in that, go check it out after this video. It's on the screen right now, and I'll leave a link in the description. It's also a great idea to seek out additional resources and information that might help you get better and understand what you're doing in your classes. This could come in the form of YouTube videos like from the Goat Abdul Bari or from textbooks, additional textbooks that you find online, et cetera, et cetera, doing a bunch of practice problems. I don't care, but looking at some additional resources is usually pretty helpful because you'll get a few different perspectives of looking at a concept, which might help it stick in your brain. And of course, don't forget to ask for help from people that you know, whether this be your friends, professors or teaching assistants at the end of the day, people do want to see you succeed and not see you fail. Did you know over 84% of you guys aren't subscribed? So if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button right now if you want more cool content like this. And don't forget to hit that like button. It helped me out a lot. All right, back to the content. You'll always hear people saying you need to build side projects, but you probably haven't heard that many people saying how to build a side project and for good reason. Most of the time when you're building a side project, it's for personal reasons. It's so you can get better at coding. It's so you learn a new language or framework, or it's an idea you're interested in. Of course, you might also just be building a side project so it looks good to a certain company you're applying to, and that's fine as well. But at the end of the day, to build side projects, you need to have time to build side projects, which means you need to be good with the first section of this video, as well as your time management skills before you can actually get to the point where you have enough time to work on side projects. I'm not an expert on side projects or anything. The ones I've built have been very small scale and really just for my personal use, but that's the key point. Side projects don't have to be some grand new idea that you can release to a bunch of people and get a million users. Also, that would be very nice if that happened. A lot of the time, they're really just for your personal use. You build them because you're interested in the concept. You build them because you're interested in the idea. You build them because you want to learn something new. And that's honestly great because that way you get to learn a lot of cool things while building side projects. And side projects don't have to be unique. Like I mentioned, you can just build a to-do list app. That's fine as long as you're not just copying every single line of code from a YouTube tutorial and you're putting some effort into making it your own, whether that be not really following the tutorial and just looking at the functionality and building a clone or spinning on you know some of your own features and making it something that's uniquely you. It doesn't have to be super crazy. It just needs to be something that you can look at, be proud of and say, hey, I build that. And of course you're building it for, if you are building it for resumes, then make sure to use some of the technologies that you think companies would be looking for. So if you're applying to a front end position where people are using React, 
to make sure to have built some React side projects, etc. You get the point. It's not that complicated. Don't overthink it. Just go out there and write some code. And I really should take my advice because it seems like it's a fun thing to do and I don't do it nearly enough. Let's be honest, most of you watching this video are probably interested in getting as many big name internships as quickly as you possibly can, and for good reason, because who doesn't want a lot of money to spend and have fun times with, right? Well, quick disclaimer, the companies you get your internship offers from will either positively or negatively affect your happiness for only a few days, and it fades quickly after that. Anyways, getting an internship as a CS major is pretty simple. All you have to do is have a good resume, which you can build by getting great side projects and keeping your grades up. You need to be great at lead code problems. You need to get referrals and build connections and networks so that you can get actually past the resume screening stage. And you have to apply to a bunch of companies so that the numbers eventually work in your favor. Now, I've said that slightly sarcastically because it's very simple in nature, right? It's, you know, just a series of steps, but it's quite hard to do just because of how many computer science majors there are so you're going to have to figure out a few ways to differentiate yourself. And really, the only way to do that is get referrals from somebody. If you're not getting a referral and if you don't know what a referral is, it's basically when somebody at the company vouches for you and says, hey, this person might be a good candidate. And that usually helps you get to the interview stage of the interview process of the internship process. And once you're in the interview stage, then you can actually just grind and then it's up to you. But before that, it's really just up to the face. Here's a very quick overview of how to get good at lead code. If you want a more detailed description, I made a video about that as well. You see it on the screen right now, and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. First of all, you're going to have to learn the basic data structures and algorithms, stacks, queues, maps, hash maps, trees, whatever. All of that, you're going to have to learn it well. And to do that, you can either just watch a bunch of YouTube videos about these algorithms and then implement some data structure and then implement these data structures and algorithms by yourself. Implementing it by yourself is very important because that'll mean you'll have the concept sticking around in your head a lot longer than if you just blindly memorized it. Please don't just blindly memorize it like you would do for a school exam because it's important to know for interviews and just mugging it up won't help you at all. So try and implement them yourself because you'll remember it a lot longer. And if you don't want to do that, then you can follow along with some online courses. There's quite a few. I think Princeton has one on data structures and algorithms that you can take for free online and just do the assignments and watch the videos from that if you want a more structured routine. Otherwise, just watch YouTube videos and stuff by yourself. Then once you have those data structures and algorithms uh, completely under your belt, you can just start doing actual lead code problems. The YouTuber Needcode who does great videos about lead code has a roadmap up on his website where you can just go through and do the problems in order so you get the best understanding of lead code problems possible. And I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. It's really good. And if you follow that along, you should be good enough to do well at most interviews. And if you want more details about the internship application process and stuff like that, I made two videos about that. I'll leave links to them in the description down below. And you see them on the screen right now as well. And you should go watch that after this video if you want a more comprehensive overview of how you can actually land one of these internships. Thank you so much for watching through the entire video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment, share it with a friend who also needs this video. Good luck on your college journey or whatever. I don't know how to say that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching through the video again. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.